Hey guys, welcome to video seven of the Wood Gas Crash Course. Today we're gonna to answer your common questions and wrap the whole thing up. Um, I hope you got some good value from this. I hope you've um, kind of learned the gist of things in a, in a hurry. So let's see, common questions. Can I run a diesel engine on wood gas? So here's the answer. You can run it up to about 80% or so, give or take, but you still need some of the diesel to be there to create the auto ignition because there's no spark plugs. And so the diesel needs, needs to be there to auto ignite. So that, and then once it's ignited, it, you know, ignited, then it can, you know, get the other 80% to, to go off. So, um, so it, yes, it partially it can. You could convert your diesel with a spark, but I wouldn't mess with all that. It's a great way to extend your diesel. So you're using a lot less partner, a, a wood gas fire with it. It'd be a great solution. And you can just take the, 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 governor you know whatever's governing the throttle and connect that to your gas line in just pipe your wood gas right right into your intake and so it's going to bring in air it'll bring in wood gas and then um and then you can meter how much wood gas is going going in there by tying linkage to the um to the governor and so when the governor opens that wood gas valve can open up and then when the governor's closed it can close that wood gas valve down so you're not flooding out the air you need because you need a certain amount of air for your diesel um so that's what I would do for that. Okay, how is wood able to be made into fuel? This is a great question. So basically wood is just kind of a lattice work of carbon and hydrogen. And so when we say we, we use hydrocarbons, you know, we use petroleum, it, it's kind of the same thing, just, you know, come about in a different way. So these are just, you know, wood waste is just a natural source of hydrocarbons. We're just heating it up and, and breaking down the lattice work, the, what, you know, the structure that's holding it together. And, and reducing it down to its just core elemental, you know, burnable gases, which are super clean. How do I hook it up to blank engine, you know, whatever engine? And so every engine is, you know, different. What you want to do is, um, you know, try to find the simplest engine possible when you're starting out. And, um, you know, what I would do is I would place a spacer between the intake manifold and whatever your source of carburation is, your carburetor, put a spacer in there so you have a place to pipe in your wood gas and your air mix. And so you can either run on wood gas or you can, you know, have some valves to turn that off and, or just run on gasoline or, or propane, whatever your secondary fuel is. And, um, that, you know, that's, that's really the way to do it. Again, I, I covered, covered that whole thing exhaustively in, in the electronic carburetor workshop. So you can, you know, learn more about that there. How many hours does it run? So a unit will, unit will run based on the weight of the wood. Um, so, you know, it's a couple pounds per kilowatt hour. It's a couple pounds per mile down the road in a vehicle. Um, you know, you can easily add a feedstock bin and, and you have a lot more wood, wood run time, you know, probably up to about five hours, you know. And if you're looking for 24 seven gas, I would just, you know, fill up a gas bag, have it stored in a, in a cargo container and um, have the machine in, in one end of the cargo container, have a gas bag in the other fill that thing up, you can get, you know, a good probably, I don't know, 10 cubic meters or more. And then, um, then you have 24 seven gas. So that's really the, the best way to do that. If you're looking for that, um, running your gas fire and an engine 24 seven, you know, 365 is, it's not practical. Your engine oil changes would add up in cost. Um, you know, there's the, the wear factor, the noise. So if you want 24 seven, um, yeah, just bag some gas and store. It's not a big deal. What is the maintenance process? So basically you, you un, undo the caps and there's, you know, soot and, um, and ash, you know, just like a fireplace and you just take a shop vac and you, you shop vac that out. Um, there's some condensation that forms, some water's recaptured. You just drain that out and put that in your garden. And, um, and then you change the filter, you know, on day, basically on days you're going to use it. So it's a, it's a daily change. If you're not messing with it, you know, for a week in between, obviously <clears throat> you'd go a week in between your, your maintenance cycle. But it, it's real simple. There's, you know, there's nothing fancy involved with it. Can I pump gas into my house? Um, definitely no. Um, it's just, you know, it's not natural gas. You know, there is a, like a, a carbon um, element to it. And so it's not safe to breathe. And, and so I wouldn't pump it in the house. Plus it doesn't have the, the scent added like, like natural gas does. So you could, you know, smell it's, it's basically a scentless gas. So I would definitely say no. Um, what you can do is you could, you could pump it outside to like an outdoor grilling area 
that's you know maybe you know out just outside your your kitchen door or something uh then you can do outdoor ki you know cooking with it bring your food into the kitchen you know that that's probably what i would do for for that scenario and then uh the final most common question what does it cost to build or buy one of these machines that you've seen in the videos um so basically this machine cost me about 1500 bucks in parts and um, and I you know and that's with all the tweaks on it you know the, the the simple version was about 1200 bucks and that was buying new tanks and stuff if you could find you know some old recycled tanks you immediately save 200 bucks there you know it's conceivable you could maybe get down to a thousand if you're really you know like scrounging um, if you had some scrap metal maybe even a little less but um, all, all told that was 1500 bucks in raw materials I had to you know hand cut the parts out of the metal and, and whatnot um, if you have the parts cut, you know, you want to add, you know, maybe another 800 or 1,000 bucks. If you're having somebody do the welding, you want to add another 12 or 1,300 bucks. If you haven't even done turnkey, you're probably looking at about a $6,000 gas fire. And, you know, it's just designed and built to be, you know, that, that you know, worth every penny at, at 6,000. So, um, you know, if you had to have it built for you by somebody, um, just turnkey, that's probably, you know, what you'd probably expect to, to, to spend on that. Um, but obviously we, we have the book for you. Hopefully you can just build it or, you know, you know somebody who can build it. Maybe you can partner up in some way. And, um, you know, 1500 bucks in materials, you're, you're that close to making free gas, you know? So it's, it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, and that, that's not a huge barrier to entry. You know, we're talking about creating a, a mini refinery that turns wood into, into, you know, a natural type of gas. Um, it, you know, like your own little wood cartel you know <laughs> you're the OPEC of wood cool well guys I gotta do a little more welding and, and whatnot uh, I just want to let you go I had a really good time hopefully ed educating you I hope you enjoyed this if you could please tell a friend you know like us on social media you know all, all that that all that fun stuff I would really appreciate it it would um, it help propel this message out there I want to you know leave a nice legacy here and 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 whatnot I have some cool projects I'm gonna be you know incorporating wood gas into you know, maybe you want to follow along. So definitely check us out, woodgasifierplans.com. Thank you.